If you follow me on other platforms like Instagram and Twitter, you've probably seen me talk about video games from time to time because I've always been very into video games my entire life. Some of my earliest memories are playing the original NES and Super Nintendo, so I've always been a big fan of Nintendo games and Nintendo consoles. As a matter of fact, the Nintendo Switch is probably my favorite console of all time. It's the only console I currently own and I play it all the time. That console is amazing, but today we're gonna kinda combine the two worlds of my love of photography and video games together, and we're gonna take a look at this Nintendo 64 point and shoot. A while back someone by the name of JV reached out to me on Instagram and said that they found some of these old N64 branded point and shoots in the back of a camera store and he wanted to send me some because he knew I was a fan of video games and I wanted to go ahead and check this thing out while also give one away. So I have one myself but I'm going to be giving this one away at the end of the video. So stick around if you're interested in winning this um, just is interesting the right word? This is obviously not something developed or designed by Nintendo. It's obviously just one of these little point and shoot plastic bodies that they've slapped an N64 logo on just as a promo item. Whenever consoles and things like that would be coming around, they would always have different branded accessories. And back then these little uh, 35 millimeter compact camera focus free, uh, this is the kind of thing you would see being a promo item pretty regularly. It's really just a piece of plastic with a lens on it, a very crude plastic lens at that. And honestly, this is probably like a step below disposable level in terms of performance. This thing is, we can go ahead and take a close look at the camera though, just so you know exactly what you're working with here. On the top of the camera, you do have a frame counter so you can keep an eye on how many frames you have left and you have a rewind lever just like you would expect and a shutter button. That's it. On the back of the camera, you obviously have your door where you load the film and you have this little uh, wheel style of advancing your film similar to a disposable camera. Basically, you just advance this little wheel on the back here until it stops. That's gonna set your shutter and then you can shoot. But what's interesting is on the lens cover here, it actually has a built-in shutter lock so that way as you uh, you know have your shutter ready to shoot, if you slide this over to cover up the lens, it actually also creates a lock so you're not gonna accidentally trip the shutter if this is in your camera bag. It's not until you slide it over that you're actually able to shoot. But what's interesting, this is clearly just a plastic body that was manufactured and then just anybody can slap their own colors or logo onto it. But on the front here, you have a couple different things. This is where it's closed, this is where it's opened, and then if you slide it all the way to the right, there's a little flash icon. Why that's there, I have no idea, because there's nowhere to attach a flash, there is no built-in flash, it's just one of those things that's uh, built on there and actually has no real feature. You also have a very nice braided strap built right in there, so you don't have to spend a ton to uh, you know, protect your investment here, you've got one built right in. And you actually do also have a plastic tripod mount on the bottom, as well as the button to press you know, before you rewind your film. Now, my favorite feature on this camera is definitely the viewfinder. Typically, with like a disposable camera or any other point-and-shoot camera, you have something inside the viewfinder that's gonna basically show you what your frame is looking like, because you're not looking through the lens on a camera like this, it's sitting just above the lens and so normally there would be something in there to kind of show you what you're looking at in terms of field of view because there is no marking on this lens telling you what your uh, focal length is. Typically on cameras like this it's anywhere between 28 and 35 millimeters so uh, with this viewfinder it's literally just a hole in the camera body with clear plastic on the front and back you're not getting any kind of change, you know, as if I'm looking at the camera right here and I bring it to my eye, the field of view doesn't change at all. It's, it's just a hole. Now, if you tend to shoot lenses like a 28 or a 35, you can kind of just keep that in mind as you're shooting this thing and not really worry too much about it, but uh, it's really just ridiculous to try and frame anything up with this using the actual viewfinder. Now, as I mentioned, this is a focus-free camera. It says so right on the front of the body there, and what that means is that you don't actually have to focus anything yourself. Typically on disposables or any little cheap point and shoots like this from this era, uh, you're looking at like an F8 to F11, maybe somewhere in between sometimes, and the shutter speed, you're stuck somewhere around one one hundredth of a second. It will change, you know, depending on camera to camera, but really that's what you're kind of working with. It's almost like a Holga in that sense. You have one shutter speed, sometimes one aperture, and uh, 
that's all you've got to work with. I kind of had to guess on where my focus was in terms of like my minimum focus distance. So I was kind of assuming maybe around a meter, maybe a meter and a half somewhere. That's where I would start to achieve focus. Honestly, I don't know if anything is in focus. Maybe infinity will be in focus, but looking at some of the photos, I don't really know if anything is truly in focus with this thing. I loaded it up with a roll of Ultramax 400 because that's like my favorite consumer grade film. And uh, you know, with a camera like this, I feel like that just pairs nicely. I shot some stuff in town, but I mainly shot this in the backyard with the kids and the family and just tried to kind of get a feel for what I could do with this thing. You know, really quick snapshot, point and shoot, not too much thinking involved or uh, framing involved, obviously, since I can't really use this viewfinder. And as you can see in the photos, the corners are extremely distorted and soft. Uh, even in the center of the frame, it has this like really hazy kind of look to it, basically no contrast at all. And it's hard to see if anything is truly sharp. I mean, I was shooting photos, obviously, of the kids and the dogs running around, so some of those might be a little bit blurry to be expected, but even the photos where I was like completely still, it looks like there's camera movement there and there really wasn't. You're really working with a very basic, cheap plastic lens. Now, obviously that's not to say you can't make interesting photos with this. This is all clearly subjective. I mean, you can take a really sharp lens and make a boring photo and you can take a really bad lens and make an interesting photo. But uh, just using it as sort of like a snapshot camera, it's definitely not something I would recommend, at least for what I like to do. I wanna be able to see my kids' faces and like, actually be able to tell who they are in the photo. But one thing I did do and had a lot of fun with was just uh, the last like five or six frames, I think, on this roll. I handed it off to my son, Elliot, who is two, and just let him take photos. And he walked around the yard and shot some photos of, uh, well, he tried to take photos of me and Molly in the hammock, and somehow he got some overlapping frames in there, so I think he was uh, a little lazy in his <laughs> advancing of the film. But he did manage to shoot a couple photos of our dogs, one of Charlie by himself, and then he also shot one of Charlie kind of at my feet, and I actually really like this photo. Next step is to probably get Elliot his own Holga or maybe Instax Mini. That would be a lot of fun. He loves instant film, so it would be cool to see what he does with an Instax Mini camera. All in all, you have this little plastic brick. And like I said, I am going to be giving one of these away. So big thanks to JV for sending these to me. Uh, this was just a fun little thing to try out as someone who loves video games, especially Nintendo. Um, it's cool just to have one of these on the shelf. And obviously one of you can have one as well. So the only way that you can win this is the first person to guess in the comments what my favorite N6 game was. Leave that in the comments. The very first person who guesses it, you are going to get one of these in the mail and I'll reach out to you to get your address. So uh, go ahead and leave your guesses. And actually that reminds me, in the last video I mentioned we were going to do another giveaway for a Leatherman Rev. Right here is the Leatherman Rev that we're going to give away. So uh, let's read some comments and pick a winner for this thing. Julio says, just remember to take it out of your camera bag when going through airport security. Yeah, that's a very good point. Obviously, I always keep one of these in my bag, but if you're going to be traveling, keep that in mind. As soon as the TSA sees that kind of thing, if you're about to board a plane, they're taking it. You're likely never going to get that thing back. Carlos says, I always wanted to say this. Have a nice day, Matt Day. Appreciate it. You too. Mike says, I do solemnly swear that with the Leatherman, I will be up to no good. I thoroughly appreciate that comment because I am a big Harry Potter fan, so well done on that one. Let's read a few more, though. This plus a roll of gaff tape is essential. I agree. Always have a roll of gaff tape. You can use that on anything. Anthony M says, my grandpa has always carried one with him. He refuses to leave home without his Leatherman. Uh, that's awesome. My grandpa actually gave me my very first pocket knife. Uh, it was an old-timer pocket knife, and I carried that thing with me everywhere when I was a kid. Uh, I actually have that knife tattooed on me now, uh, just sort of like as a remembrance to him. Uh, Anthony, I'm going to send this rev to you because I love that. I think it would be cool for you and your grandpa to both be carrying Leatherman, and uh, hopefully this is something kind of like a little bonding thing for you. So, Anthony, I appreciate you leaving the comment and sharing that with me. Send me an email at matt at mattdayphoto.com. I'll get your address and uh, I'll get your new Leatherman sent right out to you. So huge thanks to you guys if you did join in on that giveaway. I appreciate it. And obviously, if you want to win one of these Nintendo 64 point and shoot cameras, leave a comment. First person to guess what my favorite N64 game is, and this camera will be on its way to you. So if you guys have any questions or comments about this camera, or maybe any other recommendations of cameras, maybe even point and shoots or cheap cameras you'd like me to try out and give away, 
definitely leave them in the comments below. So if you guys are interested in supporting the channel, the easiest way to do so is by subscribing. But if you're also interested in checking out the Patreon page, I'll put a link in the description. We do all kinds of fun stuff over there and the support has been huge ever since I decided to go full time here on YouTube. So thank you guys for everything. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.